Hello there, channel members, friends, and followers from around the world. This is Q8 Pilot, your host for tonight's show. And today we have a special aircraft that we're going to be taking a look at, the Mitsubishi MU2 version 2. Uh, the aircraft is by Toga Simulations, and it happens to be an aircraft that carries a lot of sentimental value for X-Aviation because it was the aircraft that uh, pretty much uh, announced the inauguration of the X-Aviation store many years ago. And I actually purchased the, uh, the initial version of the aircraft. I spent about 10 or 15 minutes with it, and that was pretty much it. I never went back to the aircraft. And until now, that uh, version 2 came out. And I will tell you that this is actually a complete revamp of the aircraft uh, and like any other add-on it's got its highs and lows and in this live stream ladies and gentlemen i'm going to be taking a look at everything related to this aircraft including the 3d modeling we're going to take a look at the documentation uh, we're going to take a look at the system simulation and we're going to take it for a full flight from santa barbara to fresno California in the United States. Uh, beautiful Orbex scenery to accompany our flight today. Uh, this is Orbex True Earth California high definition and uh, the airport is the default Orbex airport and as usual all the commands for the arrival departure airports and our route today is available through chat command. I want to begin today by welcoming everyone here to uh, this stream and I want to thank you very much for uh, making the time this evening to be with me at uh, 1700 Zulu, uh, 8 o'clock local time here in Kuwait. Dark Blood Lover, Gibi, welcome my friend and thank you for your continued support. Esad Al Ramdi, welcome aboard. Matthew uh, uh, Johansson, uh, welcome aboard my friend. Uh, Carl Childers. Thank you very much, sir, for being here and for your support and for your generosity. I really appreciate it. You're a, really a very kind-hearted man. Thank you for all that you do. Um, we have with us today also Michael Jones, 420. Welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. And we have Jerome. Welcome aboard. Uh, Hamid. Welcome, Hamid. Glad to have you with us. And uh, we have also with us today, James. James, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Ryan, hello, Ryan. Uh, welcome aboard, my friend. And very glad to have you with us on board this uh, flight. And thank you for your continued support. Matthew, welcome aboard. Phil, uh, we have also Michael Allen. Welcome aboard. Pilot A340, Tom Kyler. Welcome aboard. HD Simulations, Parking Brake. Welcome aboard. And thank you for your support being a member of the channel so the first thing we're going to do is as it is always the case with q8 pilot reviews is we're going to be taking a look at the 3d model and to do this we are going to hop to the outside of the aircraft and as you can see this aircraft is actually very nicely modeled uh here let's go and let me slow this down a little bit here and we're going to begin by just taking a look at the exterior model. And I have verified that this model actually is a very authentic replica of the real uh, Mitsubishi MU-2. The aircraft was uh, built in the 60s and uh, it's actually its production remained until 1986 by Mooney in uh, the state of Texas. Uh, the uh, Mooney has gotten uh, rights uh, from the uh, from Mitsubishi in Japan to basically produce this aircraft in Texas, and uh, and then Mooney had some issues. Uh, I believe they were financial issues, and they had to shut down the operations in Texas. Uh, Mitsubishi then took over uh, the production of the aircraft, and it remains to be until this day in service. The aircraft has had. Uh, somewhat of a, uh, you know, of a bad record in terms of safety, uh, especially in the U.S., uh, 304 fatalities uh, from the uh, Mitsubishi and incidents involving the Mitsubishi uh, MU-2. Nonetheless, uh, a very quick overview of what has changed in this version. Everything. <laughs> Everything has changed in this version, uh, including 
the aircraft uh, 3D model, the texture work, uh, the simulation of aircraft systems. You'll be very happy to know momentarily that all the circuit breakers, for example, are now simulated in this aircraft. And the fuel system uh, has uh, been completely uh, rebuilt from the ground up to really simulate the actual Mitsubishi MU2 fueling system. Uh, there is a lot more than what meets the eye in this aircraft. And uh, I can tell you right off the bat that I was very impressed by the work done uh, by the developer, Toga Simulations, uh, previously X Scenery. Um, of course, there are, I do have my comments. I do have my, uh, you know, there are definitely pros and cons. And hopefully in this review stream, you guys will be able to decide, you know, whether this is something you like to invest in or not. So this is, I think, uh, a quick overview of the aircraft fuselage. Now, the resolution of the textures is done to a very high standard. This is probably, um, you know, 2K textures. You can see as you come closer to the aircraft, we can see the jagged lines here. It doesn't really take away anything from the aircraft. Uh, I mean, why would you come this close to the model to look at, you know, the wings underneath? But um, being the detailed guy that I am, I like to look at these details. And uh, nothing broken with the textures, but they're not the highest resolution. Let me... Uh, let me change this uh, increment here and make it medium. Camera is safe. All right, perfect. All right. But um, again, you know, it's not the 4K textures, uh, without a doubt. Uh, but nonetheless, beautifully textured uh, aircraft inside and out. By the way, it comes with a lot of variants uh, with support with the G500 device from X Aviation. Uh, overall, I do like the texturing. So the texturing is done to a very high standard uh, this aircraft will def definitely please your eyes uh, wherever you look uh, you can see the nice details right there uh, there we go here you can see that you can see all the rivets and the bolts uh, on the aircraft fuselage uh, done quite nicely uh, the use of pbr material is just right so it's not you know it's not exaggerated and it's not underdone it's just tried to give the aircraft a very realistic uh, reflection. Uh, if we look again here at the landing gear area, the landing gear is done quite nicely. Maybe the uh, the actual wheels are a bit too clean for my liking, uh, especially being uh, you know, you know, you can see here they're a bit too clean. Maybe a little bit of dirt on the tires would make it a little more immersive. Uh, but nonetheless, the three D model. Is very nice. I do like. See, let me let me tell you what I like about this developer. You see these lines here and how they end and start. The meeting points where these lines cross is something I uh, appreciate a lot. Uh, I think it's done quite nicely uh, by Toga Simulations. And uh, if we move back here again to the back of the aircraft, uh, again you can see some nice details there. Uh, right here, the aircraft tail. Uh, nice use of shadows there to, again, pre create a realistic look of the aircraft. So I think enough said on the uh, on the exterior model. By the way, just uh, I think the wing is one of the better areas here on this aircraft. So it's got a very unique, uh, very unique wing. And it's 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 a very unique aircraft because if we look here, the um, MU2 has actually five tanks. There are two delivery tanks here and here. The main tank is right here, and then you've got the uh, fuel in the tipped tanks here, and this is all actually simulated. So the movement of the fuel transfer from the tip to the main tank is actually pretty accurately done in this aircraft. So, um, and we're gonna take a look at uh, all the instrument in just a minute. Let's hop into the 3D cockpit. And uh, as you can see here, if you've ever uh, uh, taken a look at uh, the MU2 cockpit, you will appreciate that this is a very authentic representation of the actual MU2 cockpit. It looks very, very good in my view. Uh, again, it's not perfect, but it's a very good effort to bring it to such a high standard. Uh, I'll tell you what I mean. For example, if we look um, up here and uh, we kind of zoom in, 
you can see again the jagged lines the line here is not perfect you can see the jagged lines here as well so not a perfect blend there uh, but overall from a distance from about you know this distance here the pilot distance uh, i think it looks pretty good um the texturing overall on this aircraft is uh, is pretty good i'd probably give it an eight out of ten overall uh for for the texturing inside and out uh, as you can see here the uh, flooring area the the chair the seats uh, are done quite nicely and there is a fully modeled uh, passenger cabin that is uh, interactive and you can actually open these doors so these open and you can use the headset if you want and we'll probably use it later on and you can open you know the uh, different doors uh, and cabinets and drawers uh, here all uh, around the uh, the cockpit uh, the passenger cabin beg your pardon and it's a nicely modeled cabin as well so if we look here at the cabin I think it looks pretty nice uh, overall, uh, good effort really uh, creating a very authentic experience. And by the way, the seats, if you look at the real Mitsubishi MU2, you will actually see that the seats are very similar to the ones we see in this aircraft. There are, by the way, a lot of variants of the Mitsubishi. Uh, again, here we have the uh, tray uh, fully modeled there, which looks very nice with very nice animations. So I think the developer has really taken his time in developing this aircraft. We've got the Mitsubishi logo there. And uh, to really recreate a, an authentic experience of the aircraft. And by the way, uh, you do have the lavatory here. Uh, I don't think it's probably not modeled, uh, but that's the lavatory. And uh, you can. Uh, this is the aircraft door, so we can actually open the door. And nice F mod sounds uh, all around. The sounds are not exactly great, uh, but they're not bad at all, in my view. I think they're pretty good. Uh, Tom, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad, uh, glad to have you. Uh, and runs on medium cards. Uh, I can't really. Uh, the, the this aircraft actually is not very performance hungry. We'll take a look at the frame rates. Uh, frame rates in just a second. Stan, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. And thank you very much, sir, for your support. Mr. Aviation, welcome aboard. All right. So um, let's go ahead and take a look now uh, at the outside. Now, the first thing I noticed uh, on the outside of the aircraft is you can remove the engine covers, but you can't remove the chocks. And that is a little strange uh, that you can do that. Uh, so if I go here and I say remove the engine cover, I can remove it, but you can't remove the chocks. No matter what you do, you can't. So this needs to be accessed through the control panel, which we will do in just a second. But we can just simulate walking around to the back of the aircraft and entering uh, the aircraft through the aircraft door. Uh, so we're gonna just hop into the aircraft and we're going to close the door. Again, nice F mod sounds. Not perfect. Uh, they're not, uh, you know, very. They are okay. They are okay. F mod sounds are nice. Uh, and then we can uh, uh, actually close this door here. Very nice animations. I must say that I really like the animations. And this wooden door looks very, very nice. It looks pretty realistic in my view. Uh, he's done really a good job uh, developing this. Uh, you know, the the texturing overall is is done to a very high standard. I do like all the animations, and uh, the aircraft overall look and feel is very authentic, very representative of the real Mu2 uh, Mitsubishi. All right, back to the cockpit. Now, one of the things I kind of do not like about this aircraft is that the control panel is the gizmo control panel. And this is true of all the aircraft sold through the X Aviation store for some reason. And to access it, you can either enable the gizmo uh, menu that comes on the right side of the screen. I normally turn this off and I leave it uh, so that I can access it from the window here. It says the MU2 preferences. So it comes with this control panel. It's not a very involved control panel. 
um, but it does the job. So here, as you can see, you can uh, connect the GPU, uh, engine intake covers, uh, pitots, uh, the yoke lock we can remove, uh, nose wheel chocks, you can only remove them from here. And uh, key is always in ignition. Uh, there is a uh, AviTab mount and it fully supports AviTab, which is a good thing. Um, Oh, Tom, thank you very much for letting us know that the chalk uh, removal will be implemented in the next uh, update. Um, and you can set uh, your default VFR code uh, for GTX transponder, uh, break, application rate. Uh, that's, that's, I, those are some details that you will uh, probably would like to tweak. You can charge your batteries and the batteries will wear out. So if you put the battery on and leave the aircraft and come back, it will definitely drain the battery. You can fill your main tanks uh, from within the uh, uh, from within the control panel or the preferences menu. And then you can save performance and restore default performance as well uh, once you are back in the sim. Pretty simple uh, but effective control panel uh, or preferences menu. Uh, I, I would have preferred that, you know, there is, a, for example, an... Uh, you know, similar to the Arabesque aircraft where you click on their logo and you have a nice control panel where you tweak everything there with a little more options, perhaps. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, it's... Oh, we have V1 simulations in the house. Hello, my friend. Welcome aboard, Captain. Guys, uh, V1 simulations, uh, for those of you who do not know him, he is a real-world Airbus pilot an accomplished uh, aviation instructor and uh, type rated on all sorts of aircraft. He's got a, a wonderful channel with lots of incredible content. I saw uh, your, uh, your stream last night, Captain, of uh, all the different scenarios uh, with the Tolis A319. It was a brilliant uh, stream. And uh, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Um, so, uh, so, <clears throat> The preferences menu is does the job, not in my view, the next generation control panel that you'll have, but it, it does the job. Now, if we take a look here very quickly, I want to bring you the, um, the documentation of the aircraft. It's available online. There is a readme file included in the documents folder, and everything related to this aircraft is available online including you know the GUI, the joystick configurations and how to configure them, uh, what is recommended, uh, the command lists that are available to you for mapping into your uh, favorite uh, flight sim gear, uh, including the procedures. But we're going to be using the procedures uh, today uh, from within the, uh, we can use it from within the AVI tab, uh, or we can just bring it up uh, as a separate document. You can do that. And there is also the livery paint kit, uh, the release log, and the bug tracker. So all this information is available to you with a little bit of history on the uh, aircraft uh, and a product overview. Uh, you can, by the way, just to, so that you get a feel for the quality of the documentation, if you click on the engine and propeller, uh, you know, you get a, a nice description of what the different parts uh, of the uh, engine uh, are and how does the engine actually work and what are the function of every single switch that is modeled in this aircraft. And I will tell you guys, I'm very happy to report to you that most of the switches and the instrumentation aboard this aircraft are modeled. So there's very little uh, in terms of ENOP. Everything is working, including, by the way, the... Um, let me just uh, bring you down here so you can just take a quick look at the documentation. Uh, I think there's some good explanation. I had to go through some of it in order to be able to assess the quality of the documentation and, of course, learn a little bit about the aircraft. Uh, but even the circuit breakers, all the circuit breakers are modeled aboard this aircraft. This is a uh, this is big, big thing. This is a big thing. Although I haven't really seen a lot of people use circuit breakers, but nonetheless, they are modeled for that extra challenge. And probably if you're like V1 and you like to do all these different scenarios, this is going to be helpful for you. Uh, and uh, all of them, yeah, all, all the circuit breakers are, are, are modeled for full authentic experience and really customizing the, uh, the aircraft flying experience to your liking. 
All right. So now that we have done all of this, we are ready. Let me tell you a little bit about our flight today. And uh, today we are going to, uh, let me bring up uh, Sky Vector. Uh, so today, folks, what we're going to be doing is uh, we are going to be taking off from Santa Barbara uh, in California, in the southern part of the state. And we're going to be tracking the Foxtrot Lima Whiskey VOR station. And then we are, uh, by the way, we're flying VOR to VOR today. And then we're going to take the Alpha Vector Echo, then the uh, Lemoore. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have been to Lemoore before. Nice little, uh, you know, town in, in California, just about 45 minutes from Fresno. And then it's the Hype VOR. And from the Hype VOR, we are going to intercept the localizer at runway at 11 left at uh, Fresno Yosemite International. The uh, uh, runway 11, uh, the localizer does not have a glide slope. So it's just a localizer. And uh, this is what uh, our flight plan looks like here. Uh, this is the uh, uh, Avnil uh, VOR station, and then up to Lemoore. This is Lemoore. From Lemoore, we're going to take the Hype VOR station, which is right here. And then from there, we're going to head uh, on a course of 121 degrees to intercept the localizer for runway 11 uh, left at uh, Fresno Yosemite. So, Dark Blood Lover, just la, just, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and we have also Whittle Bolts Productions. Welcome aboard, my friend. Abdelaziz Ramadan, welcome aboard, my friend. And thank you for being here this evening. And it uh, looks like we have a new subscriber. Hobana Kirik has just subscribed, uh, subscribed to the channel. Welcome aboard, my friend. And so this is going to be our flight today. And uh, I'm going to take this away now. And we are going to start with the checklist now. Okay. So to do this, we are going to bring the uh, bring Avi tab, and we're going to go to charts. Uh, where did I leave it? We left it in the aircraft menu, and we're going to go down to X Aviation, and from X Aviation, we're going to go to the Mitsubishi documents. Uh, now you have both of these: the checklist Avi tab PDF and the checklist PDF. Let's go to the, uh, there we go. All right. So the pre-flight checklist is, uh, let me see here. All right. That's, I think, uh, good. There is too small, but too small. There we go. All right. So the pre-flight checklist uh, gear handle is down. The control lock is removed and the parking brake is now set nice sounds again listen check out the sounds uh the uh battery key switch is on which is this one right here right battery is on uh left battery isolate switches both normal these are the let me remove those those are the battery isolations isolation switches one and two they are set to the normal position and then the uh, left battery isolate switch to isolate so this is for testing and then you do this one and put them back on normal uh, right uh, so this is done there and then go next right battery isolate switch back to normal inverter switch is main this is the inverter switch right here so we turn that on and then the pitch trim is set to zero uh, the pitch trim is right over here All right pitch trim is set to zero and the rudder is actually at zero as well. And uh, the inverter switch is uh, off, battery switch is off. This is just mainly really testing the aircraft so we can turn this off and turn off the battery as well. All right, left wing. Now we can all skip all these checks and uh, we're, we're gonna start with the before engine start checklist. Uh, battery isolation switches, uh, both on normal. Battery key switch is on. We've already done the walk around. The inverter switch to main, uh, which is done. The panel indicator lights. Now, this is where it gets interesting because all of these tests are actually simulated on this aircraft. And uh, this is something I do have a lot of appreciation for. So if we do the panel test, 
Here, let me just uh, take this here. All right, so there you go. You have all the lights illuminated as a check. Let's cancel the master caution. And uh, the fuel panel indicator, uh, the radio master switches obviously are off. The master caution system is checked. The uh, fire warning lights are right here. Uh, beg your pardon, right here. So the both lights working fine. And the stall warning test is right here. Checks are right. And the fuel quantity test switch. Now, the fuel quantity, if we go down here, I need to zoom so you guys can see. Um, so now, if I go to the fuel quantity test and I click here, just if you notice, the fuel quantity gauges are now actually moving. And you can see it for the tip, for the outer wing, and the main tanks. You can see the gauges now uh, indicating. And if I remove it, so everything checks OK. And this is the outer uh, pump test also checks OK. So we are through with uh, all the fuel tests. Both fuel transfer switches must be in the off position for the system to test effectively. We have done that. And now we can now there are two ways we can start the engine. We can start the engines with feather valve and NTS check, or we can do it without the NTS check. So I'm going to skip and go to the engine start without the NTS check. All right, so this is the one here. All right, so now the first thing we need to do is main fuel valves uh, switch to open. Uh, those are, I really like the sounds of the switches, nice FMOD sounds. SRL switches, uh, SRL switches should be on, which both are. And the next thing is uh, engine instruments are check generator switches for running the engine. Uh, should be for running in should for running engine should be on well uh, sorry this one here um, cabin air selector is off the cabin air selectors are right here so you have this one and this one and they are both off at the moment the uh, propellers on the locks so this is all set we are good there and next we're gonna go to the both the run crank stop switches to run these are two switches here so you lift it up and then move it like so and then we can go to the start selector switch left or right which is this one here so we're going to start with the right uh, engine first again you pull this out and move it to the right for the right engine and now as you can see here on the engine start uh, engine start switch uh, press and hold so now we are actually ready to start the engine but before we do so we are going to head uh, over to the overhead panel here. We're going to turn on fasten seat belt, non-smoking, beacon, and nav lights. And now we can start the uh, engines. All right, so we're going to start with the right engine. And this is the first one here. And once you see the light illuminates, you release. And now we have a good start. Let me move this away here just for a second. Lovely animation of those props. Very, very nice. Check out those sounds. Beautiful. All right. We are now ready uh, to go and start the next engine, but first we need to turn on the generator for the right engine. So this one here goes on, and uh, now we have these. By the way, if you look at all these values, they're pretty accurate values, and this aircraft is very different. So managing the prop on this aircraft is is, is a handful. It's, it's not a straightforward aircraft, so it's a lot of fun to fly, quite challenging. And everything has been simulated because I read a lot about um, how the props actually work and it's actually simulated. Oh, Scott, I didn't know you were there. Welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. Um, so, yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to start the uh, the left engine. So the first thing we do uh, to, th to do that is move the uh, right uh, or the left hand ground start to the uh, left position and now we're good to start the engine there 
Again, we wait for the light to illuminate and then we release. And now we have the second uh, engine starting. Here, let's take a look. Again, the sounds are, you know, I'm sold. <laughs> V1 simulation is sold, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it is. It is definitely a, a really nice aircraft. Uh, I, I, I definitely recommend this aircraft, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you right now. My final assessment of this aircraft is probably an eight out of ten, uh, with the uh, silver uh, plaque from the Q8 pilot. Uh, channel uh, definitely Q8 pilot approved aircraft uh, very very detailed very very detailed aircraft all right so now we have the um, uh, prior to 50% increasing oil pressure 60% RPM start uh, this is of course this is all we've done so we're just gonna go to the after start condition uh, lever we'll go to take off and land now so we're gonna come down here and move it to there you go. Listen to the engine sounds. Just beautiful. Left power lever flight idle. Uh, again, these are the checks here to maintain the right. Uh, we are okay in terms of uh, RPM. Everything looks good. Uh, and I believe we need to, the uh, power to go to... Uh, so repeat for the other engine. SRL checks, again, you turn them on and off here and you check uh, you know, the warning signs, uh, just for the uh, interest of time. We're just going to do this very quickly. Pressurization system is on, so we're going to go here and turn both to auto and uh, oil temperature is good. Uh, everything looks good here. PSI is good. Fuel pressure is good in all our tanks. And uh, annunciator panel is good. We are through here. And now we can go to the before taxi radio. Master switches are on. These are your radio master switches. And now we have uh, our Garmin device. Of course, I'm using the uh, I'm using the default uh, Garmin device by Xplane. We're going to set the VOR station for our first. Let me just make this a bit smaller. There we go. All right, so the first VOR station today is, uh, let's see here. So if I look at my NAVS 117.5, so let's uh, change that to 117.5. And we're gonna make it the active frequency and you will see that everything has changed. We are about 39. Uh, nautical miles from the first VOR station. We're going to set the course for the station as well. There we go. About 342 degrees is the course uh, to the station. I have 358. Uh, no, sorry, magnetic heading is 347. And yeah, 347. All right, so. About 342, so we'll set this to 347. There we go. 347 is set, and we are good to go. We'll make sure this is on V-Lock, and uh, we are good. All right. So continuing with the before taxi, uh, the radio master switches are on, transponder on standby. I just put it on, on. Uh, that's okay. And flaps, now the flaps on the Mitsubishi MU uh, uh, MU2 is always flaps 20 for departure. So we're going to set flaps 20 is set. And uh, Rand, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us uh, this evening. And thank you for your continued support. And I want to also thank V1 Simulation for his continued support uh, over the uh, over the years. Uh, a loyal member of the Q8 Pilot channel. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, also, Mitsubishi uh, variant of which is even used by the United States Air Force for training uh, tanker heavy pilots. Yes, that's that's uh, correct, uh, Carl. Uh, there's a lot of history behind this uh, behind this aircraft. Hey, Peter, welcome aboard, my friend. 
Yeah, welcome aboard to the stream. Glad to have you here with us and thank you for your continued support. Yes, uh, folks, this aircraft is now approved by V1 Simulations and QA Pilot. So you've got a recommendation from a seasoned uh, flight simmer and a real world um, Airbus pilot. There you have it. All right. And by the way, the link to the aircraft is available in both the video description, but it's also available through chat command by typing exclamation aircraft available today at the X Aviation store for $54.95, just under 55. And uh, if you are a previous owner, like I was, of the Mitsubishi MU2, you will receive a 20% discount, which I have received and redeemed. So I've actually purchased this aircraft and I, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I don't have to say anything. I don't think this is really a nice aircraft to have. All right. If we take a look at the uh, weather conditions, I need to check. Um, all right. So let's get the weather conditions uh, just to verify the takeoff runways uh, before I. All right. So we have BFR conditions both at uh, Fresno and uh, Santa Barbara Municipal and uh, we can depart any runway uh, of we can depart any of the following runways 0715 left and 15 right I'm going to favor 15 left um, because we have a slightly more uh, headwind uh, four knot uh, headwind so I'm gonna favor uh, runway 15 left here at Santa Barbara or 15 right got the same uh, conditions the current conditions at Santa Barbara ladies and gentlemen is uh, got a bit of haze 180 uh, degree four knot wind scattered at 600 uh, I'm by the way not using real weather in this flight uh, because there was a lot of fog uh, maybe we can bring it back now uh, there are a few uh, maybe we can bring it back I don't know we'll we'll just go ahead it's it's VFR conditions so we can probably bring it back. You can see the FPS here. And by the way, you'll get 10 more FPS. So always, whatever you see on my screen, deduct. It's 10, 10 FPS deducted for Streamlabs OBS. So it's the aircraft will give you 10 FPS more uh, in whatever condition. All right. Uh, landing and taxi lights as required. Tow brakes, parking brake. Uh, all right. So here on the pro propellers, uh, we're going to take this to takeoff land, which it already set the power levers to reverse. This is reverse thrust now, and the condition lever uh, to ground idle. So this is now ground idle. All right, and before takeoff checklist, we'll worry about as soon as we are at the runway. All right, let me check the uh, very quickly set the the thing I wanted to set was the altimeter. And the altimeter is 3001 here at Santa Barbara. So let's set that real quick. 3001. 3001. There we go. 3001 is now set. And we are ready to go. Let's take a quick look at the outside. Guys, look at that. Just really a beautiful aircraft. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and release the uh, parking brake. Ah, let's set our altitude. Today we are going to be cruising at a final cruise altitude of 10,000 feet. So let's set that. Now the autopilot is... Uh, I had a little bit of issues with the autopilot, um, but I'm sure that it's probably my... Um, that I'm not using it properly. Uh, it's kind of it does funny things sometimes but nothing wrong with the aircraft because I know that it's simulated just exactly like the real aircraft so let's release the parking brake now and the parking brake is released Ooh, this aircraft wants to go by the way this I think needs to go to taxi there we go that's much better And now we can just go to the runway. By the way, this uh, scenery is that of uh, 
uh, California True Earth, uh, Orbex True Earth, California. And it's a uh, scenery I definitely recommend. By the way, the throttle on this aircraft, so now we're actually, you see when you go to reverse, this is ground idle, and uh, it's very touchy on the controls. So you have to really practice a little bit to be able to, it's very, very sensitive. Maybe you can add response curves, I don't know. But once once it's in reverse, it's in reverse, and, and it's really gonna slow the aircraft down very quickly. See that? So now we're in ground idle, and now we're in reverse, and I've made very, very small changes on the throttle. Chairman Rice, hello my friend, welcome aboard. I can flip the switch on the aircraft without any feedback. What does that mean? Cameron's son, welcome aboard, my friend. Not showing sounds like some kind of avionic switch mapping on hardware. Uh, which GPS is not showing? Tow brakes are also addressed in the forums. Uh, oh! Great. So just you uh, head to the X-Pilot forum for better dialogue on that. It's been discussed. Oh, okay. All right. I just had to stop there to read through chat uh, using Volantra for this flight. No, we're not using anything for this flight. Uh, we're just doing VOR to VOR in this flight. There we go. Where's our runway? That's our runway right there. This is 15 left. Good enough for our departure. All right. Now I'll tell you guys one thing. Um, the handling of this aircraft is just something else. Really, I really enjoyed hand flying this aircraft. I did a test flight um, earlier and hand flying this aircraft is a real joy. I do want to turn off XP Realistic because it does some funny things on the G Force. Where is it? Uh, G Force. Uh, or maybe we can just reduce it to 14 there. And if I do preview, yeah, it's just, it seems to. Uh, do abrupt movements uh, so I didn't want it to I, d I don't want to misrepresent the aircraft uh, in, in this live uh, review and uh, you guys think that this is what the aircraft is doing, it's actually not it's, uh, it's XP Realistic uh, doing some funny things so uh, we're walking about uh, oh yeah I got you Cameron uh, that's fine yeah uh, alright so we are good to go here. We are going to uh, turn on the uh, strobe uh, and uh, landing lights can go on. Uh, again, and by the way, while we're at it, I'm just going to bring these lights on so you guys can see it. And I do like the lighting on this aircraft, both uh, during nighttime and uh, during daytime. It looks pretty good. Uh, nice reflections, again, on the window and the instrumentation. Uh, all is looking good. All right, let's bring back the yoke. And by the way, this yoke is exactly like the yoke that you'd see on the MU-2. Very, very well done uh, by the development team, really, on uh, on this uh, on the modeling of the aircraft. All right, all the tests are good. Uh, we're going to take this to land and takeoff now. And we're going to release the parking brake. And here's the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and take off here, runway 15 left at Santa Barbara Municipal Airport. And we're going to be heading today to Fresno, California, for those of you who just joined us here on the stream. All right, and we are cleared for takeoff. Let's go. Some wind there. All 
right. And we are airborne, ladies and gentlemen. Landing gear is going up. Let's begin our turn to intercept the first VOR station. Fly by! Beautiful sounds. Lovely. Ooh. Gotta watch my bank there. Beautiful. I love hand flying this aircraft. Just really wonderful response, and it feels it feels very realistic. You know, you can feel the wind. Very responsive, very fluid. We're going to continue now to climb. Looks like the rudder probably needs a little bit of. There we go. Yep. There we go. So you gotta keep trimming this aircraft. Uh, we're gonna start practicing our flaps. We are on an intercept path to the VOR station now. All right, flaps up. And we are going to hit Alt Select. And as you can see now, we are on our way to the VOR station. 37 nautical miles. Beautiful uh, scenery here of uh, Orbex, True Earth. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful Mitsubishi MU2 by Toga Simulations. Just look at that. Wonderful looking aircraft. All right, and if we click now on nav, you'll see you have cap, meaning capture. And now we can select autopilot. And now the autopilot and your damper are both engaged. And the aircraft is going to continue now the climb to 10,000 feet. And we are now on our way to the VOR station, which is uh, the first one is going to be the uh, Foxtrot Lima Whiskey uh, VOR station. Lovely, just really a lovely aircraft. Yeah, you got to use the uh, trim all the time. Uh, I would, uh, I would have thought uh, we'd see a route flight plan uh, show in the GNS. Oh, I'm flying VOR to VOR, Stan. So I did not enter anything there. Um, so there's, there's nothing there. There's, uh, I can show you the flight plan here. Uh, maybe you missed it. Uh, I've shown, uh, uh, it was uh, shown in the beginning of the stream through. Uh, the uh, there we go. So that's our flight plan out of Santa Barbara. It's VOR to VOR, and once we are at the high uh, VOR station, we are going to turn to a uh, final approach course of 112 degrees to intercept the localizer runway 11 left at uh, Fresno uh, Yosemite International. So I'm not using anything there in the uh, in the Garmin device. We're just using it to uh, switch the frequencies, but that's about it. Right, so we are, uh, alt select, you will notice that the aircraft is uh, going to, guys, just look at the scenery. Look at that. Yeah. Here is a wing view. Again, nice wing views. Again, you can see uh, again, the check string is, is actually not bad, even in the passenger cabin. 
some nice uh, views here of the uh, engine. Uh, very nice reflections here uh, on the uh, on the engines. Overall, uh, really uh, brilliant, brilliant aircraft. Right, we're coming up to 10,000. You can see that the Alt Hold button is now on, and uh, the aircraft is now. This is uh, where we put our uh, props back to cruise. Let's see, let me just bring this here and bring this to cruise. Now, one thing I did not see in the manual is the prop sync. Now, I'm not sure if you need to have prop sync on or off uh, for uh, for the. Uh, but you know, I I'm just going to leave it on for now. Uh, maybe we need to turn it. Maybe it needs to be on for takeoff. Uh, similar to most aircrafts where you do prop sync, you do a prop sync at takeoff and then you turn it off. Some you turn it on later. I I really don't know, but uh, we're looking good. We're gonna reduce power a little bit here. And now we can enjoy the ride to Fresno Yosemite International. By the way, um, the Mitsubishi uh, itself, the Mitsubishi MU2, has uh, most of the variants I've seen has this black panel. Uh, so this is uh, exactly what you'd see. And I really like those details. Look at that, guys. Look at this detail here, uh, right there. And right here, it gives it this just really old look uh, like used uh, and by the way the price of the uh, varies a lot the price of the real MU2 varies a lot runs between about uh, the cheapest I've seen online available for sale today is for about 650,000 US dollars uh, and uh, the most expensive one I've seen was about 1.2 million dollars and uh, that depends uh, uh, a lot in uh, Uh, it depends on the features because the aircraft comes with a lot of variants and different equipments and different configurations. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, there is actually one available for sale today uh, for 650,000 US dollars. If you have 65, uh, 650 to spare, then yeah, by all means. <laughs> all right. So <clears throat> the thing is, I I'm really excited to see where the original MU2 was and where this MU2 is today there is a difference between day and night and like I said in in the in the first MU2 um, uh, it, it really you know it wasn't really an aircraft that I I think I spent about 10 minutes with it and, and that was it but this one is is an aircraft that I plan on flying quite a bit and I plan on streaming it quite a bit and I'm very interested actually to learn more about the aircraft systems, how the systems are simulated. Uh, there's a question here, it says, uh, what yo joystick do you use? I have been out of swing for like 10 years. Well, uh, when I'm flying a general aviation aircraft, I normally use the Alpha Flight Control Yo, which I think is the best for general aviation. I do have the Thrustmaster TCA for Airbus, and I also use the uh, Yoko, uh, by uh, virtual fly for all my airliners uh, flights uh, with the exception of Airbus where I use the TCA uh, Thrustmaster Airbus um, flight stick Benny Benny welcome aboard my friend glad to have you with us uh, this evening and thank you for your continued uh, support and loyalty to the channel being a uh, VVIP member <coughs> Should be off for landings, uh, as it can affect response. That is very true. It should be off for landings. That is one thing I am very certain of. And uh, yeah, everything is now uh, working per design intent. And everything is looking pretty good. And everything works exactly as advertised. And this is really, really cool. 
Now, the uh, one thing that I will um, point your attention to, folks, is there are a lot of variants of this aircraft. Maybe we'll do it after we land. Um, so there are about four variants that ships with this aircraft and with the different uh, modeling. I, I would personally prefer that I can toggle between you know, the different GPS uh, devices or the navigational devices from within the control panel. Um, but, you know, it, it's not really a big deal, uh, but it would be much easier than, you know, having to load the aircraft. I do not own the um, X500 uh, device uh, that is available uh, at the X Aviation store, but I've seen a couple of streams. I think John Fly streamed this aircraft a few days ago, and he has it. And it's actually pretty nice. Uh, so I, you know, if if you're if you're an advanced uh, user, and maybe if you're a real world pilot, and you really want to experience, uh, you know, real world device uh, aboard this aircraft, then I definitely recommend that you grab the X500 uh, device uh, available at the X Aviation store, which works perfectly with this uh, aircraft. So, all is looking good. Matthew, take care, my friend. Glad you were with us for as long as you did. And uh, hope to see you next time. Stay safe, my friend. All right, let's take a look at the outside real quick. Just look at this aircraft. See how the beacon light is? I mean, it, it really does look as if it's a rotating beacon. Unlike, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator, where the, 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 again, here you can see it. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, the beacon line looks very funny, uh, but this one here looks very, very nice indeed. The modeling of the uh, aircraft exterior is outstanding. Very, very nice indeed. Very authentic. I've spent a lot of time today uh, looking at pictures and videos of the aircraft. Uh, I've watched a few landings and takeoffs. Bill, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Back home to Fresno State. Absolutely. Go Bulldogs. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've interrogated a lot of videos and photos of, the, of this aircraft. Just look at that. It's got a really mean look to it. Love it. I just love the look of this aircraft, and I think what makes it very unique, and you know what makes it look very unique, are those uh, tip uh, fuel tanks here uh, on the side uh, of the aircraft. And uh, by the way, one thing I forgot to tell you guys, and we forgot to actually do, is right here. So this actually needs to go to auto, and if this is not on auto, this is the outer pump. This is so manual, we can pump it manually. But when this is on auto, what happens is this aircraft's fueling system has been, it's, it's study level. So the, the way fuel works in this aircraft is in accordance with the real aircraft. Now we need to switch our VOR station. So the next VOR station is uh, going to be the 117 decimal one. So let's bring this up and we are going to set this to 117 decimal one and switch it to the active frequency about 28 nautical miles to the next VOR station um, and and so what happens is the main tank wants to always remain full and so what happens when you have this on, as the fuel is depleted from the main tank, the, um, the pumps would pump the fuel from the tip uh, tanks to the, uh, uh, to, to, to the main tank. We have a new VVIP member, Bobby Hunter. Welcome aboard, my friend, and thank you for being a VVIP member here at the QA Pilot channel. I appreciate it very much, my friend. Thank you for your support. Appreciate it. It's very kind of you. All right. Uh, let me just bring this up here. All right. All right. 
So we continue now to uh, the next VOR station. We are approximately 24 nautical miles, and uh, we're looking good. Let's do a flyby real quick. Lovely. Just lovely. By the way, we can come up here and turn off the landing lights and we can release the passengers. There we go. Always looking good. The aircraft's autopilot works as advertised. What I've noticed is vertical speed for some reason did not work properly for me. So I struggled a little bit with, uh, uh, you know, with, uh, with descending uh, in an earlier test flight. By the way, this abrupt movement that you see is from XP Realistic. Right, you can see now that we've intercepted the VOR station. And uh, for the next one, for Lemoore, we are going to is IAS uh, working as expected uh, I think we can check we can check that it should be um, so uh, on our way to Lemoore uh, we are gonna probably switch to heading mode and I'm just gonna take a note of the frequency there to the Lemoore station all right, so the Lemoore station, the Lemoore, uh, that's Lemoore Airport actually, is on a heading of three, four, six degrees. Three, four, six degrees. Right, we're approaching the uh, 14, about 14 nautical miles. Works exactly as it should. Very, very nice uh, aircraft. Very excited to see, you know, uh, an aircraft that was uh, not so good gets transformed to this level. Uh, I mean, this is really something. And if you guys really like to enjoy something new, something challenging, I definitely recommend this aircraft. Now, yeah, there are a few things uh, with the, you know, the textures uh, in some places are not exactly like how I like them. Uh, again, you can see here the jagged lines, yeah? So, not exactly what I'd like to see. I would like to see more of a, an advanced control panel, but these are secondary things. The main thing is the simulation, the experience of flying the aircraft and flying it in accordance with real life. So when you read something about the aircraft and how it handles in real life, and you watch videos of real world pilots flying the aircraft, then you come to the simulator and you see exactly those same things. That's when you really appreciate the work that the developer has put into the aircraft. And uh, especially on, on the throttle system here, this is probably the throttle and the props is probably one of the most complex things uh, aboard this aircraft and I'm sure that simulating this in X-Plane has not been an easy undertaking. Uh, so yeah, definitely thumbs up for the developer uh, on developing this uh, this aircraft. We have got... Uh, Matthias, thank you very much for your super chat. Hi, new to the stream. Is this add-on worth it? Thanks. Hi, new to the stream. Is the add-on worth it? Thanks. It is definitely worth it, uh, in my view, and thank you for your two euro donation. Uh, in my view, it is definitely worth it. Um, an eight out of ten. 
uh, from from my perspective, uh, and definitely it gets the uh, Q8 pilot seal of approval. Uh, brilliant uh, aircraft. Now the next the VOR station is uh, I'm not sure if it's a VOR station. Uh, it's 113, 113. Uh, I'm gonna dial it in anyway. It's the Lemoore uh, 133 decimal three. No, this is not a VOR station for sure. And uh, if we switch it, yeah, it's it's definitely not. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to go to heading mode, but first we're going to make sure that uh, we are on 347. Uh, so the course is set to 347, and we are going to set our alt uh, the heading bug to 347 degrees. And now we're going to go to heading mode. All right, and we're going to continue on 347 degrees to uh, intercept Lemoore. And from Lemoore, we're going to go to the uh, Hotel Yankee Papa VOR, which is at 114.2. All right, so we're going to set that as the active frequency, uh, 114.2, 114.2, all right. And we're going to set it. Now, it's not going to appear here because we're still very far from the VR station. But once we pick up the uh, radio frequency, uh, once we pick up the broadcast of the frequency, we should be able to see it. Uh, we should be able to see it uh, in the display here. For the uh, meantime, we're going to maintain our current course, 347 degrees, and head over to Lamore. Why? Is YouTube uh, keeps uh, giving me. Uh, this message to insert ads uh, is just really bugging me. Dion, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Working on a video for this aircraft as well, both the G500 suite. Uh, thank you very much, Dion. And uh, I, I do watch some of your videos uh, every now and then. <clears throat> Thanks for uh, stopping by. Appreciate it. Again, many thanks to Bobby Hunter for becoming a VVRP member and for Matthias for your uh, two euro super chat. Perfect. All is looking good. Here's a look at the outside, ladies and gentlemen. This aircraft reminds me a lot of, of course, with, with the difference in, in the cockpit and the simulation of the systems, but it reminds me a lot of the, uh, <coughs> of the Saab 340A, uh, which is, again, a, an excellent aircraft. Uh, the Saab 340 is one I really like a lot. Uh, I think I've done a lot of videos of the Saab. Greetings from Bulgaria. Hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. No simulated pilots. Uh, I'm not sure if there is a... No, we can go to the control panel here, the gizmo control panel. Uh, preferences. Uh, show Avitab, show control position, show 3D pilot. Yeah, you've got him. So let's do that. Uh, we're going to save preference. And if we go to the external view, now we have a pilot there. Yeah. With, with the glasses, too. <laughs> Similar to mine. So you do have a uh, pilot there simulated for sure. We should be getting the, uh, in a little while, we should be able to uh, begin uh, receiving the broadcast frequency of, uh, of the Hotel Yankee Papa VOR station. And uh, we will begin uh, the descent shortly after, uh, on our way. So once we pass Lemoore and uh, we begin the turn towards the final VOR station in our route, 
we will begin the descent to 4,000, then 1,800, so there is a restriction at 4,000, and then 1,800 feet uh, to intercept the localizer for uh, runway 11 left at uh, Fresno. Here's again a very nice wink. Lovely. Again, I think this aircraft, if, if it receives just a little bit uh, landing lights out on the nose, the landing lights are out. Uh, oh, there we go. They are out now. Yeah, um, I think with just a little bit of tweaks on the textures, a little more on the sounds, in this aircraft could easily uh, be one of the uh, you know better general aviation aircraft. It's it's actually it's up there with the with the big uh, GA aircraft for uh, for X plane 11. And by the way, folks, if you get this aircraft today for X plane 11, it's a free upgrade to X plane 12. So the developer has made it very clear, Toga Simulations, that there will be no extra charge to upgrade to X plane 12 which is very, very important. I'm so jealous of your frame rate. Oh, <laughs> what is my frame rate? I think we were getting, uh, I always, of course, get, uh, this is, by the way, every tab. I can bring it here. 72, about 62. So normally I get more, but because I'm streaming, uh, so I get a little less. So about five to 10 frames is the loss. Uh, now you can see we have the uh, VOR station. So what I'm going to do is go to nav, and we are going to do that. Now the aircraft will, as you can see, nav, the uh, VOR station has been captured. Uh, I normally get more. I normally get about in the 80s range uh, in Fresno, in the uh, California region. But simply because uh, I'm streaming, it actually takes a little more from the FPS. But yeah, the actually, uh, I'll tell you guys, this aircraft is very easy on performance. Uh, so it's it's very very easy on performance. Not it's not bad at all. Uh, how do you achieve this kind of FPS? Uh, if you're interested in my specs, just type exclamation specs. You should be able to get the. Uh, the specs of my machine. Captain, do you have the X Aviation TBM 900? Yes, sir. Yes, Phil. I do have all the aircraft uh, from X Aviation, the entire range of aircraft. And by the way, I'll tell you guys, uh, my experience with X Aviation has been fantastic. Uh, Cameron's been always very helpful. Uh, I know I've heard, I've read some things on the forum, but uh, in in all honesty. Uh, Cameron's been very, very helpful for, for at least for in my experience, and I own the entire range of aircraft offered by X Aviation. So I have all of their aircraft, plus I have a few more sceneries uh, from their store, uh, such as the uh, Dubai International for uh, for X Plane, and I had nothing but a pleasant experience with uh, X Aviation. Uh, really, never had any issues with uh, with them. Uh, it's fantastic, just really brilliant, uh, brilliant, uh, you know, uh, company to work with. And um, uh, I, I normally run giveaways here on the channel, and Cameron's very supportive, uh, and he makes sure that you know the winners uh, get their uh, their prizes on time. Uh, so really, uh, I personally, I've I've had a, a very favorable experience with X Aviation. Uh, really a great store, great aircraft, and Cameron is, is a great guy. So, uh, and by the way, again, folks, uh, just as a reminder, I have paid the full price for this aircraft. I've owned the uh, the first version, the version one of the Mitsubishi MU2, um, and I've received a discount code from X Aviation, just like everyone else. I went ahead and purchased this version, so I'm under no pressure to say anything 
I don't actually believe in. And uh, if you want the final recommendation on whether you purchase this aircraft or not, definitely go for it. You will not be disappointed. Uh, those are my thoughts, my honest thoughts to you. My final score is again an 8 out of 10 and I'm deducting points just for some features, uh, the, the lack of some features such as you know a more modern control panel, uh, the sounds need a little bit more work, the textures, maybe the interiors, some spots uh, as I've pointed out in the beginning of the stream, uh, they need a little bit of work, um, but all in all um, uh, it's just great. Uh, thank you, Mike. Appreciate it, my friend. Daniel, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. How much did your system cost to put together? Well, Paul, I, I purchased the components uh, on my own. So, and I don't actually recall because I purchased them from different stores. But I think the final cost was in the vicinity about $3,400. Uh, all together but I've also purchased uh, at the time I purchased a keyboard uh, a monitor and I purchased a lot of different things mouse pads and you know headsets I, I purchased a lot of things so I'm not exactly sure what the system alone the, the cost was but it was that that that's how much I paid for the system originally we have with us Boeing Corp from Logan, New Jersey. Welcome aboard, my friend. Thank you for your continued support. And thank you for being here this evening. And glad you could make it. And today we're flying in California, Boeing Corp. Um, we're flying this uh, rather beautiful um, MU-2 uh, by Toga Simulations. Um, definitely, guys, you will not regret uh, this aircraft. If you Should you decide to purchase this aircraft, it will definitely bring hours of enjoyment to your flying experience in X-Plane 11. Free upgrade to X-Plane 12. Yeah, you can't really go wrong. And uh, it's immense fun. And there's a lot to learn, by the way, uh, on this aircraft. And it, it's not the regular aircraft that you fly, so you really have to you know, fly it several times. You have to read the manual in order to um, It is a very loud aircraft for sure, um, and there it goes, yeah. Um, so uh, it, it's you, you can't really go wrong. You can't really go wrong with it. It's got everything. Uh, oh, and ladies and gentlemen, he just did it again. Carl Childers just gifted 20 Q8 pilot membership. Oh man, I don't know what to say other than. I salute your kindness, Carl. <laughs> Thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate it very much. You're very kind. That's very, very kind of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carl. Uh, guys, give it up. Give some love to Carl Childers for his generosity. He's gifted over a hundred membership so far on the QA pilot channel uh, thank you very much and uh, please do thank him and show him some love um, really thank you very much Carl I, I really appreciate it I cannot thank you enough for your generosity very kind very very kind I'm just really speechless all right folks we are approaching our uh, our destination and uh, we are at 10,000. We need to be at about 2,000. 10 minus 2 is uh, 8. 8 times 3 is 24. We're going to add about 10 more nautical miles for contingency. So we are going to begin the descent at about 34 nautical miles uh, from the high VOR station. Uh, so just momentarily, we will reset our altitude to uh, 2,000 feet. And we will begin our descent at 34 nautical miles from the Hotel Yankee Papa uh, VOR station. And that should bring us uh, down to 2,000 feet by the time we are ready to intercept the localizer uh, on an approach course of 112 degrees. <coughs> and that's, of course, in accordance with the, uh, our flight plan 
and the airport charts at Fresno Yosemite. Perfect. All is looking good. Aircraft systems are operational per design and tent. And if we go for the uh, descent checklist, so this is takeoff and climb, descent and pro checklist. So if we look here, um, so cabin altitude select uh, 1,000 feet above airport location, fuel transfer switches, a trip manual or off. All right, so pilot uh, pitot heat is on. By the way, uh, pitot heat should be on. Yeah. All right. Uh, continuous ignition as required, anti-ice system as required, cabin altitude differential pressure, check for zero, flaps 5 degrees below 175 knots, uh, condition levers, takeoff land on final approach, landing gear down below 175 knots, airspeed 140 uh, minimum, landing lights as required, flaps 20 degrees below 155 and 40 degrees 120 knots, Landing gear down, condition lever uh, is to recheck takeoff land, power lever to retard as necessary. So, this is the descent checklist. Alright, and 36, let's go ahead and reset the altitude to uh, 2800, uh, sorry, two, we're going to go to 2000 feet. Alright, 2000. All right, 2,000 feet is now set. And uh, what I'm gonna do is we are going to also check the uh, weather information at uh, Fresno. <clears throat> so according to, all right, so weather and information is variable three knots, uh, wind, uh, clouds, a few at 10,000 AGL. Of course, we're not flying in real weather, but I'm just gonna read the weather out loud to you guys. Uh, QNH 296. Uh, so we can actually go ahead and set that to 2996. Let's do that. There we go, 2996. And we should begin our uh, descent now uh, towards uh, Fresno, California. So we're going to go and select Alt Select. And now we, if we go to vertical speed and put the nose down, for some reason it doesn't do anything. And I'm not sure why. And so if I go to IAS and I reduce the speed, then you can see that the aircraft begins the descent. There we go. So IAS works exactly as advertised, uh, works well. I'm not sure why the, uh, you know, why the, uh, the VS mode doesn't work. But we are doing well now. Bill, hello, my friend. Good to have you with us. And uh, thank you for your continued support. Darren Rice, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. And ladies and gentlemen, we have $20 donation from Paul. Paul, thank you very much for your generosity and your kindness. I appreciate it very much. Thank you very much, sir. It's very, very kind of you. Well, I'll explain 11 work on a Window 10 PC. Yeah, it does. Paul, thank you very much again. Very, very kind of you. Niels, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Thank you for your continued support being a uh, VVIP member here at the channel. Appreciate it, my friend. And once again, uh, Paul, thank you very much for your uh, $20 uh, super chat. Appreciate it. Well, that's very kind of you. All right, we're looking good, ladies and gentlemen, heading about 23 nautical miles or so. And then, of course, we're going to go to heading mode. Uh, so very quickly, here's what we're going to be doing. And uh, 
once we are at the uh, VOR station, by the way, the VOR station we're heading to, the uh, Hotel Yankee Papa, is Merced. And if you haven't been to Merced, uh, Merced is uh, is a small town about 40 minutes or so from uh, <clears throat> from Fresno. Uh, I personally have been to, uh, to Merced, and uh, they actually have an abandoned airport, uh, I think. Yeah, I think it was Merced. I'm not sure if it was Lamar or Merced. Uh, we had some fun uh, one day there at the airport. <laughs> All right, so we continue our descent. Uh, we continue towards uh, the VR station about 19 nautical miles to our uh, altitude. And once we are at uh, approximately 4,000, we'll begin our turn uh, towards uh, Fresno, California. John Games, the X Aviation modules are excellent, but their customer service for the rest of us is brutal, often insulting. Really? I really never, uh, I really never had any such experience uh, with X Aviation. So there is the speed for IAS is not set here. I don't think it is set. It, I don't think there is a knob to set it. Uh, so you just manage it with the throttle, and uh, you just go to the when, once you are at the desired speed. If you engage IAS, it would hold the speed exactly where you left it. And of course, to maintain the speed with the throttle being retarded, uh, the aircraft needs to compensate, so it will descend in order to accelerate to the speed registered in the IS system. We have L select selected and we are now from 7000 for 2000. We have about 13 nautical miles. I'm going to ease off on the throttle. Up, oh, that's the uh, landing gear horn. So, uh, we should now descend a little faster. We're heading over to the VOR station now. <clears throat> and once we are at Merced, folks, we are going to switch to heading mode. So what I'm going to do is we're going to set... Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry about that. Should correct itself. Uh, we need to go to the heading mode. There we go. All right, so the heading need to be at 112 degrees. Is it 112 or 120? It is 112. So about right here. 10 nautical miles. We are at 6,000 or 2,000. We're looking good. Now, for landing, uh, we need to move the props back to take off on land. We're currently in minimum cruise. I really like the textures there. Look at that. And by the way, if you look at the uh, if you look at uh, real footage of the aircraft, this looks exactly like the MU2 cockpit. Exactly the same. Maybe the instrumentation is a bit different because there are different uh, variations, there are different variants of the aircraft, but overall it's just remarkable how they've modeled this. For some reason altitude is very hard to control and pitch trim is almost impossible to set. On this aircraft it is a bit touchy, uh, but that is actually how it is in, in real life is what I gathered from the documentation. Uh, that it's not straightforward uh, so so yeah I do hear you there all right we've got about four nautical miles uh, before we are at the VR station and then we're gonna turn to a heading of one one two degrees to intercept the localizer looking good RPM is good all pressure is good fuel flow is good uh, torque and everything else is in the green. 
All right. I think we are close enough. We're going to begin our turn now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to heading mode. And we're going to let the aircraft now go to a... Uh, let's see here. Oops. Uh, one, one, two... One one two is set. And we'll set this here to one one two. There we go. And now that's our turn towards uh, Fresno, California. Back to the airport. And now what we can do is we can dial in the ILS frequency, uh, which is 111 decimal 3. So we're going to come back here and we're going to select 111, uh, oops, there we go, 111 decimal 3 and activate it. And now we have the distance to, uh, to the airport about 37 uh, nautical miles. We're going to continue our descent. Maybe we can... Uh, rate of descent is about uh, 500 feet per minute. We'll leave it there. That's fine. doing good our speed is good everything looks good and uh, heading select is on everything is good here now I'd like to the thing is there will be no glide slope as uh, this is a nice a very nice uh, Orbex uh, scenery one one uh, beautiful really the scenery is awesome said no MSFS 2020 pilot ever Manny how are you doing my friend welcome aboard Mr. Don, welcome aboard, my friend. Just look at that. Very, uh, very California-like uh, terrain and textures there. Very well. Hole's looking good. Well, Monterey Services Camel. Carmel. Monterey Services Carmel. Definitely, uh, Carl, we have all three sims to enjoy. Paul, no worries, my friend. Stay safe, and uh, we'll catch you later. Uh, definitely, uh, Manny, a, a brilliant aircraft. And Carl, I want to thank you again for your really generous donations uh, in gifting all these memberships uh, here on the channel. I really am very grateful for your kindness, sir. Alright, we're almost there. I need to adjust our heading a little bit. Let's 
so I'm just going to just overheading a little bit as uh, we have drifted a little bit off course. All right, now we can see the uh, localizer. We've captured the localizer, so if we go to approach, it says arm. And then we should be able to capture it. Radio altimeter is active. Now we can turn back. You can see now how the the line is moving towards the center. And now the aircraft have intercepted the localizer for runway 11 at uh, Fresno Yosemite International. Superman Animation Studios. This looks complicated, but actually it's pretty simple once you get uh, you know once once you get the hang of it. It's actually not very complex. And we're going to now continue the descent again. We are now on the localizer uh, for runway one, one left. And we need to be at uh, 1,800 feet in a few nautical miles, which we are okay. I mean, we're not too... Uh, let me adjust this to 1,800. There we go. 1,800 set. That's the uh, the landing uh, landing gear horn. We're not too far from the airport now. Should be right ahead of us. All right. At this point, we are going to move the throttles, uh, the props, beg your pardon, to. Uh, take off land. And the runway shouldn't be too far from our current location. And, uh, yeah, I think we're looking good. Finding lights are on, props forward. We need to turn off the fuel transfer. Oops. What did I do? That's not what I wanted to do. Oh, man. Can we start it again? Oh, come on. Uh, I guess we're going to land with one engine. Which is going to be really interesting. <laughs> Alright, let's do that. We're going to land with one engine. No worries at all. We need to compensate. The runway is right ahead of us now. A 
it's a good simulation of probably an engine lost and it's going to be uh, quite challenging to land with one engine because um, all right let's ease off on the throttle here below 175 flaps 5 and let's go ahead and lower the landing gear runway is in sight we've lost the left engine flaps 20 gear is down three greens see the aircraft steering now so what I'm gonna do is we are going to turn off the autopilot where is the autopilot there we go All right autopilot off and let's see here all right that's much better Obviously, off the wide slope. You think we can make it, guys? Hopefully, we can. We can still maintain the speed. And we're going to bring it safely, hopefully, here on the runway. I do have the rudder to help me compensate for the lost engine. And uh, we lost the left engine. Nonetheless, we're going to try to... Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 please, no, 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 no. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that was an unfortunate uh, turn of events uh, as we came into land. I think I, uh, I went to beta. Again, you have to be very careful with the throttle. Uh, with this aircraft, uh, and he, probably I should have just waited until we actually touched down before retarding the throttle. Could have been a, a longer landing, but uh, tell my wife I love her. <laughs> but yeah, all right, let's take this to taxi. Yeah, I turned off the fuel. It's not the main valve that you need to turn off, but this one here we need to turn off. Uh, and I accidentally turned this off, so we lost the engine. We could not start it again. And that has caused, uh, you know, the difficulty with the landing. Um, and the minute I went to beta, it kind of started to reverse, so we lost all power to the right engine. And that has caused the aircraft, of course, to steer off, veer off the, uh, the, path, to the, run the, the, the path to the runway. And uh, obviously we have... Uh, uh, collided uh, with the runway but it looks like we've we are safe we are okay uh, nonetheless it was uh, any landing you can walk away from well I'm not sure this would have been a landing that you uh, that we would have walked away from this landing but uh, again it goes to show that this aircraft is not your typical aircraft that you fly and it does require some learning I'm uh, by no means expert in flying the aircraft but I will tell you guys, this is one aircraft that I highly recommend for X-Plane 11, and it's a free upgrade to X-Plane 12. There's a lot simulated, there's a lot of work that has gone into uh, simulating the aircraft system, the fuel system, the, uh, the air conditioning system, the bleeds, uh, everything has been, uh, the, the throttle, obviously, 
the throttle and the props, feathering the, uh, the, the engine, unfeathering the engine, all of that is uh, really done uh, with a lot of finesse. Uh, I wish for a better control panel, maybe a little more in the uh, documentation, uh, and some improvements on the textures and sounds, and this aircraft would probably receive uh, the full marks. Uh, but as we stand today, it receives definitely the Q8 Pilot seal of approval, a final score of 8 out of 10, and the silver plaque, uh, definitely an aircraft that I would recommend uh, for X-Plane. And we're going to take a look at the landing in just a second here. Uh, we're going to bring the aircraft to a stop somewhere on... I thought the terminal was here. going to buy it it seems like hard work the prop animation is the best absolutely uh, you I, I will tell you guys this aircraft you will not regret purchasing uh, it, I think the investment if you of course if you have the aircraft it's gonna cost uh, if, if you have version 1 it's gonna cost you about $30 uh, but if you don't have it it's gonna cost you 54 and I will tell you that it's well worth the money uh, definitely I don't think it's overpriced or anything like that. I think the price is just right for the amount of work and the simulation of systems. Uh, I think it's just spot on, uh, really. Uh, very, very nice uh, aircraft. All right, we're just gonna find a spot here somewhere and then we'll take a look. Uh, this plane has lots of power, it definitely does. But the thing is, Carl, with this aircraft, bring the aircraft to a stop if you have it on on reverse you don't even need the brakes um, and it's the the there's a fine line between when the aircraft is on ground idle that we've encountered today where we've lost the left engine after losing the left engine we were coming in idle. I actually reduced power and we went the mil military apron at uh, Fresno Yosemite uh, and that's when we lost power to the uh, right engine uh, or the engine, the, the engine power wasn't sufficient to sustain sufficient lift, and uh, the aircraft then, uh, of course, uh, started really falling from the sky and colliding uh, with the runway. So, but for completeness sake, uh, let's go ahead and do the replay, and I think we're going to do it from here. And this is exactly, let's take a look at the outside. As you can see here, the engine wasn't running. So we've lost the left engine completely, and now watch what happens as we came into land. We're doing just fine, and uh, you know the emergency landing was uh, going as planned. Here, as you can see, again, I had to do a lot of rudder to compensate for the lost engine. And this moment here is when I went to. Uh, this is where I the the power has gone to. And this is obviously a very hard landing. Probably the aircraft would have crashed uh, right where it stopped. And there, this is again. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's take a look one more time. Uh, I'm very actually interested in what the aircraft has done uh, when we lost uh, the when we lost when we went to reverse. So as as you can see here with the engine left engine completely gone now we needed you to investigate and make an episode absolutely yeah see right there no engine but we were doing just fine I used a lot of rudder to compensate you can see the aircraft tilting and uh, I did not extend flaps to, so that I can maintain speed and now the aircraft is doing okay until right right here see that moment is when the props went to reverse or went to beta and 
then that's where the aircraft, the, uh, the right engine, completely lost power, and so the aircraft could not maintain sufficient lift and just went to the ground. time from the uh, airport perspective all right here we go yeah as you can see here no left engine we're coming in nicely to land and that's when, you know, we lost the power on the right engine as well uh, due to going to uh, beta. And uh, then the, uh, so it's actually mismanagement on my part. And then the aircraft just completely uh, lost power. Well, folks, uh, this is uh, pretty much brings us to the uh, conclusion of this uh, review uh, stream of uh, the uh, Mitsubishi MU2 version 2 by Toga Simulations. And uh, I, no, no, it's not a beta RAND. Uh, the aircraft is fully released. Uh, beta, I brought the throttle to beta. Uh, but no, no, the aircraft is, uh, is uh, fully released uh, right now. Couldn't lift the wing with the dead engine. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the problem is really we've had one engine completely dead and the other engine went to beta reverse and uh, it, it completely lost power. So in, in, it's a heavy aircraft. <clears throat> so uh, for, for and we were flying with a lot of fuel today. So just almost full fuel in all tanks. So it was uh, probably uh, there was a lot of fuel in the aircraft as we came into land. <clears throat> so um, but all in all, folks. Uh, this aircraft is uh, is definitely one that I would recommend for X-Plane 11. It's a free upgrade to X-Plane 12. It's got excellent simulation of the actual Mitsubishi MU-2. It flies really, really nice. I love hand flying this aircraft. There's a lot more for me to learn about this aircraft. And I promise you that we will see a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, of this aircraft uh, in the future. Uh, it's definitely a recommended buy from my side. Uh, it, you will definitely enjoy it. I will tell you, you will not regret purchasing this aircraft. And maybe in the next stream of this aircraft, I will do a giveaway. And um, you know what? I'm going to give two copies of the Mitsubishi MU2 to the channel members. And I'm going to give it to... Uh, also, I'm going to give a free copy to someone that I'm going to announce in the next stream. Uh, but tomorrow, be sure to join in tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to have the first look at the modified steam gauges for the Cessna Caravan for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm going to go and study the material now and hopefully I'll be able to put in a show for you guys tomorrow. We're going to take a look at those custom gauges by Black Square, uh, the makers of the taxi signs add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So. They have now a new add-on for revamping all the gauges of the default aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator, beginning with the Cessna Caravan, which we'll be taking a look tomorrow. On landing, uh, would go around, have made any difference? Uh, Vivek, no. In, in this specific case, uh, there was no possibility of a go-around. It was one shot at landing the aircraft because we have a failed engine. Uh, so this is, is something that you really can't, uh you can't really do and uh this is where i think um you know real pilot training and uh, w would kick in uh, um of course this is probably the second time i fly this aircraft so i definitely need to learn a lot about the throttle control and power management of this aircraft and what what do we need to do in abnormal uh situations so obviously there is a a checklist that we need to follow I don't have the abnormal checklist with me. I don't think it's there. So, um, so basically, I think it's it's in the roadmap to include it in the next update. 
uh, is as far as I can remember. Maybe my if my record, you know, my memory serves me well. Uh, but all in all, I thoroughly enjoyed the stream. I thoroughly enjoyed the interaction with you guys, and I want to thank you very much for being with me this evening. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all tomorrow evening. Stay safe, and bye-bye for now.